Welcome to All Things Vanderpump. And we've got a great episode with one of my dear friends, Heather Dubrow, somebody that I really love. You will know her from Orange County, but she's really a strong, funny, bright woman. So we just, yeah, we discuss what's going on in her life. So next I have Josh Altman, and he is telling me his feelings about reality television, including Vanderpump Rules. So let's listen to what he has to say. And I also had a call with Matt who had like a question about falling out with a group of friends, which is something I can definitely relate to. So let's go. Let's listen to this episode. Okay, so welcome to All Things Vanderpump. I'm sitting here with my friend and also fellow housewife, Heather DeRoe, or should I say alumni, right? <laughs> well, not anymore. <laughs> well, I'm absolutely shocked that you've gone back because, you know, we've been talking, connecting, you did Overserved, you've been here, and then suddenly I see this snippet and I'm thinking, it cannot be true, <laughs> it has to be gossip. I like to start from a place of not believing anything, so right. I thought, no way. But it's true, you've gone back. It's true, and I'll tell you, if, if anyone ever wants to know what kind of friend I am, I am a vault. You tell me something and it can't go anywhere. I am a vault. Literally did not tell any of my friends. Any, My mother didn't know. No one knew until the official announcement came out. Did Terry know? He knew. Okay. Terry and the children. <laughs> yes, of course. That so, would have been funny. Well, oh, by, by the way, way dear. Where did you? <laughs> yeah, by the way, action. <laughs> so don't, don't buy that camera. What persuaded you? Um, well, you know what? I did a whole podcast for, I'm on my podcast, Heather DeBrose World, and I sort of like went over the whole thing. Andy Cohen was on the show and we kind of announced it together, which was really fun. He was really cute about it, really generous. Um, you know, I just feel like we're at a different time now in our lives and the kids are older and not in kind of that awkward When you say they're, they're older, how old are they now? So the twins are going to be 18 soon. Oh, wow. Is yeah. that crazy? Yeah. I mean, they yeah. were little kids. Yeah. I started that show 10 years ago. Coco was nine months old when I started the show and she's oh about to be God. 11. Oh, well, that's not older, older then. She's 11, but you mean she's not as demanding as yeah. having like little, yeah. And also she's an older soul, but it was a family decision. We literally, we sat down and we had to talk about it. And, you know, if anyone didn't want to do it, we wouldn't have done it. Wow. So they were all gung-ho for it. Yeah. But let's uh, talk to me in six months and then we'll see how it goes. Well, you know, <laughs> if it works for you now, I mean, I was in a place where, you know, people keep saying, would I go back? And I keep saying, well, no, I could ever say never about anything, but no, absolutely not. It wouldn't work for me now. But if it works for you, then go for it. I'm sure they're really happy to have you back. Yeah. You know, thank you. But, you know, timing is everything in every, you know, point of business, right? When it comes to restaurants or TV shows or whatever it is, sometimes it's the right time. Sometimes it's not. If you would ask me two years ago, my answer might have been different. But Okay, well, so you're going in with an optimistic attitude yes. and you like the girls you're going to be working with. Well, you know, I can't talk about any of that, but I will tell you that I have a good attitude about it. I'm excited about it. And I'm really excited for people to finally see my house that I built and uh, for them to see the kids and what they're doing now. They're really, they're very uh, interesting kids. And one of your children just came out, didn't they? She did, my oldest daughter, yeah. Yeah. And so how is she with sharing that story? Oh, she's very open. How old is she? She's seven, she's almost 18. Yeah. Um, she's doing great. She, uh, I'm really proud of her. She's writing a book right now. She's is got she? a podcast. Nice. Yeah, it's called I'll Give It To You Straight-ish. Okay. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. All the kids are. I'm excited for you to see them. They're really- And does she have a partner? Uh, um, she has been dating, but she doesn't have anyone in particular right now. But she knows she has these feelings that just she hasn't been in a relationship. She she feels she's bisexual. I mean, she really right. is, that's that's where she's at right now. I never understand what quantifies bisexuality. And I mean, it seems like when all these kids, you know, especially on Vanderpump Rules, they'll have these flings and and then I'll say, well, think, well, doesn't that mean they're bisexual when they're fooling around with each other? And they're like, no, we're just having fun. But <laughs> it is interesting. I mean, you would, I mean, I think that, you've probably seen it with all the Vanderbum kids, is that I feel like this generation is just much more fluid in much general. More. Much more. which I love. I mean, I think it's so fabulous. But I think that, you we know- We were never like that. Did you ever kiss a girl? No. Never. Uh, wait, let me think. 
Well, you wouldn't have to think about no, it. No, I was thinking, know. like, did I kiss a girl at a show Not me, or something? Kind. No, right. I never made out with no, a girl. No, I've never made out. Maybe we should, should try we do it that? together. Yeah. All right, well, let's save it okay. for next season on Overserved. I'll come back. We'll make out. Okay. We'll good Instead for ratings. Instead of a pie in the face, we'll have a little make out session. <laughs> oh, my God, can I tell you the funniest thing? So we do, I'm here, and we get the pie in the face. We, Terry and I were so wasted. We had so much fun. Totally overstayed our welcome. I know. You were overserved. We, we I'm were guilty so as charged. Because it was the pandemic. It was our first time out. We were so happy. It was like you'd been locked up. It was like oh, kind of wild animals that it was the caged. Best time we love you in Kent so much. It was so fun. But anyway, so we get the pie in the base, and I have my contacts in, and I don't know if it was like the sugar or the sticky, whatever. They were like stuck to oh, my eyes. No. Oh, no. It was so funny. I have to really tell people that are listening that just if you come, you know, here for dinner to Villa Rosa, it's not like, you know, <laughs> essential that you go home with a pie in the face. Well, <laughs> I don't know. It's so fabulous it's here. Really- I mean, I love that. I love that you do this visually because I think it's so it's so beautiful here and you've just created well, you such love, an amazing space. Yeah, well, you love kind of creating a sanctuary. I've seen pictures of your house. I so. do. Well, you guys have to come down. Yeah, I want to have you over. Well, I understand also when we were just talking earlier that, you know, I feel that life's kind of cycles and you like to do something and then move on and it's all about different experiences. Yeah. So I'm all about that. And for me to stay in one place and we've moved so many times. We've lived in London. We've lived in, well, we lived here. Then we moved back after the earthquake. We've lived in the south of France. Monte Carlo, the countryside in England. So exciting. So I'm all about kind of moving forward and doing different things. But here I just feel that I can't replace it because, you know, I've got my horses and dogs and things, so it's kind of weird. But you've been here like, 10 years. So th- is this me, the longest place? a long place? time, yeah. This is the longest place you've ever, ever. lived? Yeah. This, me too, except for being a child. We usually move every three years, not because we want to, just because I don't I know. I like creating spaces. Yeah, my God, you want to know what's so crazy? So the last house that we built ground up, that's also in Newport Coast, um, which was featured on the show when I was first on it, Conor McGregor's living there right now. Who? The fighter. You don't know who Conor McGregor is? Conor McGregor. Yes, Conor. Oh, Conor. So it's a Conor. No, okay. Conor McGregor. Conor. Oh, right. It was so, so funny. He posted a picture yes. and my son saw it. He goes, I think Conor's living in our old house. I'm oh, like, oh, nice. How could that be? So we went up. Well, and, did he buy it or did he, is he renting it? He's renting it. I think he's training for his fight. He's training for his fight. He is, in your but you want to know what's so weird about the do whole thing? Do you have thing? a gym there? We do have a gym there, yeah. Right. But what was funny was Terry went over there for, uh, we have a mutual friend or whatever. So Terry had gone over there and, and Connor said, Oh, if you want to come look through the house. And Terry goes, Are our initials still on the floor? So I had put our initials, no. our monogram in the marble in the entryway to like our master suite. It's been sold three times since we sold it. And, and your monogram's still there? Still there. But does it look like a monogram or does it look like a crest or something? It's a T and an H and it looks like our monogram. I don't know. Oh, that's hilarious. Isn't that funny? So he didn't even know that you lived there prior to no. that? Oh, gosh. So what, what else is going on with you now then? Oh, my gosh. Crazy. So the twins are uh, applying to college. Oh, that's stressful. You know what? I'm Do not they stressed they want to go together? It. No. Did you understand this whole college admissions scandal? Like, I, I would never want my kids to go somewhere where they didn't kind of belong <laughs> academically because I've got one child that's, you know, valedictorian, was a double major at Pepperdine. She was valedictorian in her high school, so she could have basically gone wherever she wanted. Mm-hmm. And they had Max, who really didn't even want to go to school at all. I mean, I put far more energy into Max and his homework and he barely graduated whereas apparently <laughs> I hardly had to do anything. It's so was, true. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, they're all so different. You know, my joke is I was like three semesters away from an orange jumpsuit, but truthfully, I never would have done that sort of, no, I wouldn't have. But um, I agree with you. I want my kids to be happy and successful, but it's funny because I, I could not have put Max into Pepitine. You no, know, he my son like, wants to go to Pepperdine, by oh, the way. Oh, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. It's a wonderful campus. I want him to go there. I don't there. know how any of them get any work done. I just be staring out the window. Me too. I mean, it's it's gorgeous. gorgeous. But I'm of the same mind you are. I think for me, like, I come from New York and I, where I grew up, the status of where your child went to school was a very big deal. And a is lot- it? Oh yeah, a lot of kids from my high school went to Harvard, went to Yale, went a lot of Ivy League schools. Do you think they bought them- uh, they bought the one. No, in. they were just very bright kids. <laughs> we had a very smart high school, but but the thing was is that the parent. It was about the parents also. Um, it was about their status, fulfilling added, their ambition. It added to them, and so even my mom is such a school snob. So I'll say, oh, you know, Max and Nikki, they're applying to. But she goes, oh. She, they can't go there or that's that so-and-so's cousin went there. She was a moron. Like, this is what she says. And I go, listen, 
I don't care where they go to school. I want them to be happy. I want them to be successful, whatever that means for them. But I do think it's a status thing. If you looked at all of those, I mean, I interviewed so many people in this past year about yeah. talking about teen stress and all this kind of stuff and, and talking to these people these people who were involved in the scandal and people that wrote books about it. And it was really interesting. But I do think at the end of the day, it was about the parents. It was what looked good for them. I mean, who cares? And what really is so odd to me is that these parents are so successful. What do you care? I don't know. I do remember um, going when Pandy first went to school here. She was very young. You know, she went to Buckley, I think, at five. And I remember them oh, saying... Oh, Buckley's, Buckley's the fancy school. I had friends that went yeah, to Buckley. And yeah, and we lived there and in... Um, in Beverly Hills, and then she went to Buckley. And I remember them saying, oh, you know, maybe you should give them a $15,000 donation, which, you know, 32 years ago was a, a lot, lot of money. Of money. Yeah. I remember thinking I'd never heard anything of the like. You know, I went to school, you paid your school fees. That was it. No, they want money now. It's a big deal. They're always raising money. There's a lot of money being raised everywhere. Yeah. Well, anyway, so I know you started as an actress. Yeah. And as then, did you. Yes, but... I kind of gave mine up, really. I mean, way... Would you ever do it again? I don't think you can when you've been... God, I hate to say the word reality star, but I think when you've been on reality, it's almost how can people invest in you as, as a character? <sighs> it's I've a done good a couple point. of things where I played myself, yeah. you know, like on an ABC kind of episodic thing. Um, I did something with Lisa Kudrow that was really cute and I liked it. But how are people going to ever look at me when I've done 500 episodes of reality television? It's a good question, but I do think it's, it poses an interesting point because, you know, back in the day or even recently, there are certain celebrities, you know, certain actors, I should say, that really don't ever release any information about themselves for exactly that reason. You know, uh, you know, Brad Pitt's not, you know, hanging out and uh, talking about his life or whatever because he wants to be able to maintain that veil, right? So he can play all these different roles. But I do think the landscape of television and social media and life has changed so much that I think the audience loves knowing about people so much that they kind of forgive it. I think everybody would always think, what is Lisa Van <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you had a different accent, maybe wig. Well, maybe, you know, I could I'm voting for it. Accent. I like it. Um, so you grew up in the suburbs of New York. Yeah. And then, so why did you move to California? Okay, so I was a musical theater major. Were you really? Yeah, it was my thing. I was a singer. I mean, I was a musical theater person. So I do thought, you ever sing now? I, you know what? The, the last time I sang was, I'm going to say through two years ago, I sang the national anthem at uh, Angel Stadium. No. Yeah. And that's such a big song as well. I never understand why they make these anthems so big because nobody could ever reach the notes apart from the professional it's singers. totally true. <laughs> By the way, I had a pitch pipe. I was very nervous, but it was a really nice bucket list item and I, yeah. I enjoyed it. It was fun. And Andy was really sweet. He actually um, put a clip of it on Watch What Happens Live. And oh, that's yeah, great. Yeah, it was very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I haven't, but I haven't really been singing. Um, but I was a musical theater major. I thought I was going to go to Broadway and I ended up getting cast on Divorce Court. Divorce court. Divorce court. It, it was like a, a um, like a, a court show, but it was all reenactments. So they would take the um, like a Judge Judy thing, but but exactly. with actors. With actors. And so I went down to Florida and I did two episodes and they were terrible. I mean, honestly, it was oh, the I've worst acting. That. Come on. Can oh, Andy find that? Andy, why, if you're listening, why, find that. Why is, I don't know why he never got this from the vault, but it's literally, <laughs> I was like an agoraphobic ex ballerina lesbian in one and something else. They were, ballerina lesbian oh, agoraphobic. Right. It okay. Was sounds it was. interesting. It was terrible, but I had tape. And I will tell you, it was probably a VHS tape, but I had tape. Oh, I know, right. Right. And so, um, I sent out the tape to try to get an agent and everything. And the producers of that show ended up flying me out to LA to work on this other series, which didn't end up going. What was that? Oh. But it was it was supposed to be the new Buck Rogers series. So they flew me out and to meet with me and all this stuff. And I stayed at the Beverly Hilton. My sister came out with me. And uh, we went to Musso and Frank. So like, we did all this stuff. And, and that didn't end up going. But I thought, you know what? I could always go back 
to New York, which I thought I would, but I thought I would try it here for a little while. And then, you know what happens? Then I got a job singing and then I had a 14 piece big band I toured with. And then I started getting acting gigs and then I was series regular on shows. And then I met Terry. So would you sing now? Would you sing live now? Not no. right now. No. Oh, it, like in the, in general, would I? Yeah. Um, sure. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Like what would, what's your song? Like your big oh, song? Oh God. I don't really have a song anymore. Um, like I'm not a karaoke person. I never... I never did that, but um, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I sang at Tamara's wedding. You did? Yeah, I did. Um, Solo? Yeah. So no, I had what, a band. What was that? So what was that? I sang um, kind of a bluesy version of Come Raider, Come Shine. Because I had a 14-piece big band, so I did a lot of like jazz, blues, right, right, right. big band Gosh, I would singing. love to see that. I sang the theme song to... One of my shows to That's Life on CBS. Oh, because yeah. we have, you know, like piano nights here. Pan <gasps> plays the piano. Oh, I would come sing oh, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah of course. You've got to have a few drinks and be prepared to make I a fool of it. yourself. Don't let Terry sing. So here, let me tell you something. You know, his brother was lead singer of Quiet Riot. I don't know what Quiet, Quiet. Riot Do you remember is. Come On, Feel the Noise? Come on, feel the... Yeah. So that's Quiet oh. Riot. That's Terry's brother. Really? Yes. So he he, he passed away a number. Some, I think he told you. Yeah, I think he did tell me something. But anyway, so one, one time Terry and I are in the car, this is years ago, and he's like, I think I can sing. And I'm like, huh? And he goes, yeah, I think I can sing. This is Terry. I go, okay. He goes, yeah, I was in the car driving and I turned off the radio really fast and I kept going and I think I, I, think I got it. I go, okay, let's hear it. And what I was, was like, it? Oh, okay, no. brother, put it away. No, well, stick you know to what? Medicine. Maybe you should do a duet with Ken because he's got the same kind of perception. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and it's just a terrible, <laughs> terrible noise. Um, so how did you get cast on Housewives then? And why would you do that? Why would you jump out of scripted into because that's kind of almost like doesn't come with a return ticket does it It, well who knew at the time first of all and I think I was I'm going to make a bold statement but I think it's true I think I was the first like working actor that was cast on the show what on the entire Housewives Housewives franchise yeah there's plenty of them now but there's lots but that's why giving the performance of their lives I know but that's why I think that the show has changed a lot and it's opened up to a lot of different things. But yeah. in any event, at that time, um, so I my so I was on this show called That's Life and it was canceled. And then about a year later or within that year, I got pregnant with the twins. And so I went from being a full-time working person to a full-time stay-at-home mother with twins. And I still like, I would do a pilot that did get picked up. I would like, you know, go to LA for a couple of weeks, work and then yeah. come home and, and did some random guest things or whatever. But I had four kids in seven years. So I was home with all of these children. So you started Housewives when they were how old? Coco was nine months old, my youngest. How could you do that? I, I just don't know how you would even have because the energy for that. I wanted to get That's out of the so- house, Lisa. <laughs> I was like, they were like, there's a TV show. I go, yes, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's fine. What is it? What? Oh my God. No, the truth was. How um, did they find you? So what happens when they cast reality shows, as you know, is they call maitre d's of everybody. They call plastic surgeon's office. They call all kinds of things. And a little known part of the story is that they had called before Coco was born, when I just had three kids, they had called Terry to his office and asked about Dr. Dubrow's wife. And I... At that time, I had the three kids at home and I'm like, oh, a TV show? How fabulous. Yes, I'm in. And I actually, they, I did an interview with them. And at the end of the day, they said I was to New York. They hired Alexis Bellino. To New York. Yes. They said I was to New York to be on the show. They hired Alexis Bellino. And I said, oh, okay. And then afterwards, Terry goes, oh, thank goodness. And I go, why? He goes, oh, honey, on that show, they throw wine on each other and they're mean. I go, why would you ever put me up for a show like that? I had no idea. So it didn't work out. And I went, phew. Oh, so what happened to Alexis Bellino? She's still with Jim. No. They split not, up. They split up. But what happened to me was, I, so it didn't work out. And then a few years later, when now I had Coco, so this is a couple of years, now I got a nine month old, got four kids and they called and I said, absolutely not. I now understand what the show is. And I had seen Beverly Hills because of Adrian. Because right. Because Paul and Terry Well, the first season friends. of Beverly Hills was very different. Yes. Yeah. And it was very like lifestyle and they, but Orange County was a different animal. So 
I was like, no way, I'm not doing this. This is not a thing. And Terry signed, people know this part of the story, but Terry actually signed the contract for me. And so I was pissed and we didn't talk. And then finally I go, fine, fine. You want me to do it? Fine, I'll do it. And then he showed me a scene and he showed me this scene of uh, Tamara throwing wine on Gina Keo and all this stuff. And he thought I was going to be horrified. And I laughed. And he, he was like, why are you laughing? I go, oh, well, I get it. It's like a Christopher Guest movie. I think I can do that. It's parody. It's fine. It's satire. Oh my God, that is so brave for you to do that. Like not knowing what you were going into and also with a nine month old. So last summer you got the green light for seven year stitch on E. So that's going to be like an hour special, right? Yeah. And then, so you're going to be making over people's. couples. So, you know, Terry and I together, you know, we have our separate careers, but together we've written three books together. We have a big uh, skincare and supplement line we sell for years. We, you know, we do all these things. We've had podcasts together and whatever. So it was like, you know, people call us couple goals and, and how do you guys, how would you manage to get through the reality curse and, you know, do all these different things and, and stay together. And I feel like, you know, and knock on wood, you know, don't want to jinx anything, but, you know, we have through the years, as I, as I think you and Ken have also really discovered the secret to our marriage success. And, and how long have you been together? We've been together almost 25 years. We've done 39 married. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy. So much, but it's great. And I feel like we're all lucky. You know, there is a matter of luck involved in all of it. Marriage is a leap of faith, but you still, you have to grow together. You have to work on your marriage. You have to do all that. And you have to have resources. And so, you know, we, we started talking about like, you know, if we could open up our Rolodex to people and take couples that are kind of in that seven year mark that are going, did we? Do you think you really get itchy at seven years? Do you think that's about the time where people really do feel that, you know, I do. Is? I do. I think because I think the honeymoon phase has completely worn off. And I think you're in sort of the mitten as they say. <laughs> you're in the you're yeah. in the middle of it and, and you're in the trenches and there's nothing shiny and new happening. And you do look at each other and go, was that the right thing? Maybe not everyone, but we're looking for those couples that are getting that itch and feeling like, did we okay, do the right thing? Okay, let me ask you this. When yeah. you got married, so how many years ago was it? You said it's 22. 20, 22. Yeah. How many people that were at your wedding are still married? That's a great question. But I mean, um, percentage wise, roughly. None. I know. Isn't it amazing when we look I, back honestly, at our old wedding none. video? I mean, also, it sounds terrible, but so many people have died yes, as well. Yes, that too. Um, but when I look at most of the married people that came to our wedding, I mean, I would say a good 90% of them are divorced. I'm going to agree with that. I never thought about it, but you're totally right. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, know. Odd. And they were all kind of literally shaking their heads when I walked down the aisle because I'd only known Ken three months. So it's just, <laughs> and I was 21. <laughs> <laughs> Seemed like a good idea. <laughs> Everybody was like, nah, that's not going to work. So I thought, okay, let me make it to 40 years just to prove them wrong. Get the ruby necklace and then I can go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have Heather's Closet, which you launched. What is to Heather's Closet? So Heather's Closet, if you're talking about, are you talking about my fashion line? Yeah. Well, it says you launched it two years ago where you show off your closet and you give things away. Oh, that's my YouTube channel. So, you know, my kids are so technologically savvy and I'm so not. So one night- Oh, me neither. I'm terrible. And it's just like they do everything on this phone. I have this, no idea. I, got, I have to, This is why I had children. I hand them my phone. I go, can you fix my blah, blah, blah? I have no yeah, idea what I'm doing. I know. And I wanted to stay with the Blackberry and I, everybody kept <laughs> saying that looks like the most antiquated thing you've I like a yellow legal pad personally <laughs> A nice sharp pencil. I know. But um, yeah, so my daughter, Katerina, she was like, you need a YouTube channel. I'm like, okay, fabulous. What am I going to do? So we went to Javier's. I had a cocktail and I was like, I've got it. I'm going to do it from my closet and I'm going to talk about fashion and I'm going to style things and I'm going to pack and show everyone how I pack and all these, you know, different things. So show I, everybody how you pack. Yes. Like, tell me how you pack. I want to hear it. Okay. So I am a very good packer and I, you know, like, to individually wrap my shoes in the shoe bags. I wrap all my clothes in white tissue paper. Oh my God, you sound like my mother. My mother was just like, oh, oh. oh she would just so like good. make such a big deal. She would like literally put things, put one piece in, tissue paper. Next thing. And oh, she I'm said a little more was, next level. And she would say that it would stop everything creasing. Yes. Really? But you have to fold it. It's like this. You know, when you go shopping at a boutique and yeah. you come home, if they've wrapped it properly, it still looks really beautiful when you get home and you just shake it out and it's perfect. Right. That's how I pack. 
Like it's go like it's going it in the like bag. Sounds like a lot of work. You're taking home. Well, on the way there, it's a bit of work. Um, but on the way home, I just throw it all in. I don't okay, care. Okay, so when you're going away, say you're going for two Cat. weeks, what are you taking exactly? Oh, so you're okay. going. <laughs> how many, I want to tell you whether you're an expert packer or not, because how many suitcases do you take? Two okay. weeks. I am actually a very good packer, except on one trip, which was my last big trip before the I pandemic. I know I was going to disagree with you, but go on. I know. <laughs> the, my one big trip before the pandemic, I had two suitcases because usually I'm very good at saying, all right, I'm going to bring these three pairs of shoes that will satisfy all these different outfits. I condense how many purses. I try to, you know, repeat jewelry and shoes and like certain things like that did not take up too much room. Except when I went on this trip, because I was like, you know what? This is such an epic trip when we were going all through the South of France and we we're going to Europe. And I said, I want to not just look fabulous. I, and then you I, also buy a lot of shit. So yeah, you oh, need I had to take room to grow. Suitcase. Yeah, yeah I for sure. <laughs> and I thought, I'm just going to pack everything I want. I'm going to put together every outfit and everything. So I was not good at it. But so I you were two had, weeks on the south of France. Mm-hmm, and Paris. Right. Yeah. And I had two suitcases. But Terry had one suitcase. That How I big were the suitcases? I had one, you know, like the Ramoas. I had one of the major large ones yeah. and one of the medium ones. Oh, okay, it's not bad. It wasn't bad. Uh, okay. So, Wait, so that might be a lie. I may have had two of the large ones. Yeah, I think you had two of the large I think ones. I had when two I went to Europe, I had two of the large two ones. Two large ones, and then I had like the smaller wheelie one. Yeah. But my smaller wheelie ones, I like the bougie ones that, you know, they do. Did you see like the Ramoa Dior collab they did? No. Oh, it's so pretty. I've got the little Chanel one. I got the I Chanel one with too. the XL bag. Okay, but what do you do? All right, so this is how crazy I am. So if you're flying commercial and you're going through the TSA, what do you do with your beautiful little Chanel wheelie well, bag? Well, the velvet one, I've got a few. I mean, the the velvet one is annoying because then he goes on the yes. thing. But I don't want to put him in a case, in a plastic no, bag. But you know what I do? I bring like the dust thing. Oh and my I gosh. slip it on if we're going to go commercial. I slip it on so it goes through the TSA thing. Yeah. And then I just take it off and turn it inside out. Oh, you're like a little OCD. A little bit. A little. Well, I, th- when I see people walking barefoot through TCA, I want to vomit. It's the most disgusting thing. I know. When, but I never wear socks. So you have to bring the... Okay, here's the tip. Oh you got to bring the socks I hate in your that. bag. I always think I'm going to get Veruca's. <laughs> you know, like when I know more, and they say, take your shoes off. I'm like, please, no. No, you have to bring the socks, you put them on, you walk through, and then you have to turn them inside out before you put them back in your bag. So when you're taking your socks off and turning that inside out and the bag's turning inside out, what's Terry doing? Um, not, take it, doing the same thing, probably <laughs> nothing. But uh, to be honest with you, I mean, it's been a while since I've flown commercial. I know. Well, how do you get to Europe then? We haven't been. Yeah. We haven't been since, honestly, that trip was the last time. And that was I used to fly private to Europe ago. as well. And like literally, because I had four dogs, I couldn't get four dogs on the plane because we right. had a boat there. Yeah. It was, you know, like, I mean, this sounds so spoiled, but yeah, we used to fly and then kind of, we'd go for three months. I didn't want to leave my dogs, you know. We had, that a, friend, cost a, we had a friend that they were flying their plane yeah. to um, Europe and the turbulence was so bad. Really? That they said they will never, they will take, they only want to be on a jet. Right, like, like a, big, a big plane. Like a big plane to Europe. And then they charter when they're there. And by the way, I realize everything we're talking about right now is so, so not obnoxious. relatable and horrible. And I'm sorry, but it's just what Well, it is. I mean, I work my ass off. We give a lot to our charity. Um, you know, I've definitely worked with many, many charities. So I don't want to apologize for anything I spend. You I know agree. what I mean? It's do, you like, feel, do you feel like people, do people ever comment to you like, um, like, oh, you, you're showing this. Why, don't, why would you spend that on that? Why don't you give it to charity? Do you feel like you have to, like, explain uh, yourself? Well, I mean, I'm a working woman, you know. I don't even, I mean, Pandy does a lot of work for me, a lot. But I don't even have an assistant. So I don't have a stylist. Right. I do even do my own nails. It's not like I'm, you know, I'm working all the time. It's really difficult, the, the restaurant business. Yeah. Most go out of business. So, yeah, I work really hard. We've done things like Help Feed the Homeless every week for 12 years through our restaurants. I've got my own 501c3, which was, you know, a lot to create. 
great. I've been an advocate for many kind of charities where I'm not talking about just going to red carpet and speaking right. for them. I'm talking about, you know, hosting events for them, my restaurants, LGBT, Glad. So I don't really, I, I feel if somebody's going to criticise me, then that's great. But I hope that they're doing more than I am. Yeah. So, yeah, we've had to cut back. I mean, the whole restaurant thing through COVID was a nightmare. But by the way, I was driving through West Hollywood uh, oh, yeah, we're two days ago. And ra- yeah, oh, my gosh. Now. And yeah. I know it's pride and it's so great. It's funny. I was driving. I was going to call you because I was thinking, oh, my daughter would love Tom, to go. Tom, are they allowed Tom. to be, are underage people allowed to be in any of those places or do you have to be over 21? It's a no, restaurant you don't, too. Though. a restaurant. Yeah. So you can come I in. I want to yeah. bring them. They're beautiful. Uh, but no, I think if you work for something, you're a good person, you give back to the community and you're philanthropic philanthropic um, yeah I think if you want to spoil yourself and you work for it I'm not stealing it right. <laughs> or taking money that's not no, mine you're not taking someone else's, else's money. money oh yeah I know what we're talking about well I'm not going to go there <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing no well I know a little bit yeah. um Oh yeah, I want to hear about your. I want to hear about the closet thing. And oh, your, so, so what? So you go through your closet and you give things away. I give things to Covenant House. You know, Covenant House. It's an amazing kind of a house where you transition from homeless to, and they kind yeah. of set them up. And they I are ha- brilliant. They've worked with us on Vanderpump Rules as yeah, well. Yeah, I have a place like that that I give yeah. clothes to as well. But this is more like. I give away to the audience. Like but who? I, like you know, what happens? Oh, like I do a contest. I gave someone, really? um, I did a thing, a giveaway with one of my reunion dresses. And Oh, I some bet gal- you want to get rid of that thing, don't you? <laughs> the karma on that, we needed to turn it around. Yeah, but normally so, it's such although a that was bad a good, experience. That one was a good one for me. It was fine. It had no bad juju. But um, this gal wrote to me and she was so sweet and she'd had cancer and she was just looking for like a little, and it was bright pink and it was so oh, pretty. she given it to me. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. No, okay. And so I sent it to her and she just loved it. But you know what? Oh, I really? Had it, I turned that whole YouTube channel, I sort of morphed it from Heather's closet just to Heather Dubrow. And I started doing a house tour of my house because people were so fascinated by it. And I had left the show before we showed the house. And this house out of the 12 houses that we've done, this was my second ground up. And it was the first one I did by myself because I was scared before. And it was the first one that I said- So you did it with an architect though. So yes. they drew it up. I had a fabulous architect. And I, I had a builder and I just worked with the builder and I would say, I want this, I want that, I want this. And we, as it was going up, I was designing it. Right. And I love this house. This house is amazing. And so I did a house tour, went through every detail because, you know, you love design. I love design. Yeah, I love it. And when people love the like thing- I'm so excited about going to like a house design shop, you know, or oh, uh, things know. like that. Me so too. So for me, yeah, I really am passionate about that. Me too. And people want to hear like the story behind like, where did you get those things? And how'd you find the flooring? And, and uh, you know, an interesting story about it. So I did that. So I sort of turned the YouTube channel into that. But working off of the Heather's Closet thing, I created a fashion line. That's at Shop HQ. Now, launching fashion in the beginning of a lockdown of a pandemic, not the greatest time. When everybody's in their sweatpants. It was not the greatest (laughs) time to launch. So we're at this point trying to figure out like how to shift and move to the next step with it. But, you know, I love it so much. And I, I poured my heart and soul into this line and it's all stuff I wear and love and and uh, so we'll see what happens with it. But I just love being creative. I mean, I think I you and too. I are so similar that way. So what do you think is next for you? What is it apart from Housewives? I mean, what are we going to see on Housewives this year uh, in terms of what, what are you kind of developing in your life now? Well, I'll tell you in my life what's going on is, like I was saying earlier, the twins are applying to college, which is a big deal. I've, are you going to be emotional when they leave? Um, yes, but I really do believe that my job is to create healthy functioning happy humans that are independent and fly. And so as much as I will cry, because I cry at everything, I will cry when they leave. I am so excited for them. I mean, don't you remember when you left home and you, it's like, that's when your life really started. This whole time has been for me and I've gotten to enjoy them all these years. And now I get to sit back a little and watch them, you know, find themselves, find their partners. Yeah. And I mean, I didn't that. leave to go to college. I went to start work. I didn't go but to even college. Still, yeah. Like you were on your path. Yeah. I sure. love that. I, sure. I, I'm, ex- I'm super excited for them. I think when you go to college, 
there, though, it's, you know, you definitely have much more of a, a sense of security than when you're going out into the world to yes, work on your that's own. that's for sure. Support yourself. I think it's a very good transitional period. I think it's that, it's like a like people that don't go to school, that's fine, not judging it. But I think it's a good way station for them to go from the- Find your feet a little bit. Yeah. Out of the nest into, yeah. Into yeah. like that little like, yeah. transitional stage before yeah. they're thrown into the fire. So yeah. I'm mm-hmm. excited for them. Like I said, Max has um, a podcast called I'll Give It To You Straightish. And what's been so interesting about that, and she's open about everything, you know, about her sexuality, about her stress, about therapy, like everything. When she talks about her sexuality, is that um, not her her choices? Um, I mean, does she talk in depth about yeah, sexual she, experience? Oh, or do you, no. Cause, no. No. I was going to say, because I, I, as a mother, that would probably be very hard for me. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I'm just so glad that my children want to speak to me in a, in a real way because I... My mom's great, but she's very 1950s and they didn't talk about anything. Oh, my Nothing. parents would I mean, happily talk about everything. Not mine. We didn't, my I sister don't want and I, to. It made me uncomfortable. No, we didn't even know what a period was. Like, we didn't know anything. So with my kids, I've sort of gone the other route with them. And I don't need to know everything. Don't tell me. But yeah. when they have a question or they want to talk oh, for sure. about something, they were very, very open. Yeah. And I love that they feel comfortable talking to me. Yeah. And I, in my back of my mind, I have to go, you're not your mother. Take a breath, <laughs> you know. Like, I know, but like, you know, Max would say the other day, oh, something, something, P.O. mom. I said, what, what's P.O.? Pull out. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to know. I was like pissed off. <laughs> that is so funny. No, she doesn't talk about that stuff because she's actually more of a private person, but she talks about therapy and and she talks about sexually more about like what it's like to come out and how to speak to your parents and your peers and your people and how to find your people. She's really, she's very bright and it's really lovely to listen to her talk. So what was interesting was I thought kids would listen to her show, but kids are short attention span theater. I mean, even more so like TikTok is almost too long for them. So right. they don't listen to podcasts. They're too long. So what I found was, is that it was adults listening to her show. And I started thinking about it. And well, I was so like, it's that- good education for adults to understand how kids yes, are feeling. how they feel. And I said to Max, I go, you know, everyone I've interviewed in the last year and a half about the college scandal, about teen stress, da, 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 is all adults. I go, maybe, maybe you could be the teen voice. And so she was like, that's a good idea. She goes, do you think I should write a book? And I go, yeah, write a book. So she's I, she's editing well, it right now. It's going well. I've worked well. with the Trevor Project. and mm-hmm, Me too. But, you know, like done their PSAs and talked yeah. about suicide prevention and everything um, for many years. Or, um, But when you look at the statistics of LGBTQ, how yeah. they're three times more likely, maybe even more than that now, more likely to commit suicide because of confusion and it's shame scary. of their sexual orientation. So the world, you know, when we kind of... If we as we progress, hopefully, you know, with this generation become more inclusive and acceptance. I, I hate the so. word tolerance as well. What's tolerance about? It should be acceptance. Don't tolerate people, you know. So yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Sure. I salute you as a mother for being so yeah supportive. That's well, exactly it, how we should be. You know, we be. also got. I mean, when she came out, thousands and thousands of messages from kids and parents, especially to me, saying, you know. I wish I had been able to talk to my child like this. We don't have a relationship or my child committed suicide or, yeah. you know, all these different stories. And so I'm just, I'm proud of her for being able to tell her story and put it out there. And if you can help people, how how amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Heather, so nice of you to come by and see me. Uh, next time in the OC. I know, you look beautiful. Thank um, you, so yeah, you as I always. wish you lots of luck uh, going back to Housewives because you'll need it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in touch. <laughs> of course, you've got a very successful podcast. Yes, which thank you've been you. doing it for years, haven't you? Yep, we just hit over I think 125 million downloads. Heather Dubrow's World is you know anywhere you find your podcast on Podcast One, Apple Podcast, Spotify. There it is. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, you never stop. So <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> sitting here with Josh Altman from Million Dollar Listing and he's going to tell me all about what's going on in pop culture if he knows because I think he's a workaholic like myself so what do you got? First of all my my favorite show I've actually thought before about uh, retiring as a real estate agent 
even though we're selling a billion dollars this year. And I, don't I actually think just you should want to do that. I just want to come work for you for a chance to be on your show. A what, Vanderpump Rules? Yeah, because I've been working out. I feel like it could be behind the bar with all, you know, <laughs> all the muscles. And like, maybe I'll get to be on Vanderpump Rules, which is my favorite show on TV. Oh, thank you for that. I Well, it's coming back. Good. I mean, it was off last year because of the pandemic. Because yeah. there's obviously nowhere to shoot with the restaurants closed. Right. But it's coming back. They've grown up a little bit. Have they? Yeah, well, it's still, I mean. <laughs> You know what it is? It's because it's a show that I always think uh, is about most importance when it's got authenticity. So when it's a group of friends that have known each other for years and years, yeah. then things kind of bounce off. And as you know, in reality, you're encouraged to speak your mind. Yeah. So things kick off and it's not something manufactured where they try to bring a cast together. It's the same thing with our show. People always ask to go, so is the drama real? And they don't realize... We have been together for so long. Yeah. And just like you get in yeah. a fight with your brother or yeah. your wife or your assistant, it happens every day. Like, yeah. you know, so there's plenty of drama that Stuff. happens where it's all real. Also, you're kind of constantly making deals. So there's obviously opinions about the way things are formulated, I imagine, because I yeah. butt heads with people, you know, at work. But also when they worked in the restaurant, it's a nucleus that has to bring them back together. Right. You know, so that's what initially was the, the fact that made it so cohesive. But now they're all kind of inextricably entwined in each other's lives anyway. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, it's 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 definitely it's fun to watch. And uh, Casey, my assistant, she on the way up said, who is your favorite on your favorite show? Because you have so many great, obviously you, but you're okay, the boss. <laughs> but so so uh, if I had to choose any of the people that work for you, I was thinking about this. I think James Kennedy is my favorite character on that show because I love watching train wrecks. And I love just the fact that he keeps getting fired. Like we have somebody who works for us who keeps getting fired and then we keep rehiring them. I'm so emotionally invested in that boy. <laughs> I know you can't let him go, also right? Also <laughs> his history, you know, when you see his relationship with his parents and yep. how things kind of have been so topsy-turvy. Yep. But I have to say with James Kennedy, he's an extraordinary and I will use this the word reality star because he's been on reality television for so many years. Right. Because he does not ever, ever even acknowledge that cameras are there. He yeah. just brings it. If I say, listen, you can't. No, Lisa. I'm, yeah. like, okay, I'm the one that's almost saying, well, to calm down. You have second, to bring you know? it. He that's is it. really, really extraordinary. You see him blush on camera. You see him just suddenly turn to this sniveling mess when he doesn't get what he wants. Yeah. But, you know, he's been sober, so he's a little bit more together, but he's still got some rough edges. <laughs> well, I learned a long time ago because we've been on now for a million dollar listing. This is our... 13th season. Um, oh, you've been on since 2011, right? So it's like two years after I started. So we're kind of yes. almost birthed around the same time. I mean, we're kind of the OGs yeah. of Bravo reality TV at this point. Um, I always thought people, when I was on it, you know, it, it was, hey, I'm going to sell the biggest houses. That's all I'm going to talk about. I'm never going to bring in my personal life. I remember saying this to the producers and uh, you very quickly realize that's not possible. No one cares about any of that yeah. stuff that you thought you cared about. Yeah. All they want is emotional your family, content. emotional drama. Like I'll put pictures up on Instagram and I'll get you know, 10 times as much engagement when I post a picture of my kids and I than if I post a $50 million house, which yeah. I always thought that's what people want to see, but yeah. they, they don't care about that no. stuff. Yeah. No, they want to know the kind of inner workings and the machinations that make yeah. you the person that you are, I think. It's quite fascinating, really. I mean, I've I've loved being on reality television, but definitely on Housewives, it was very challenging because I totally, you know, I was often at odds with all the women. Yeah. And Well, you uh, decided to take on the whole team. I well, like I to break it down by individual. Not, <laughs> that was not my decision. They decided to always come for me every other season. And yeah. then yeah. it was in the last, you know, season when I left that I was in a terrible place emotionally. They bullied and ganged up many, many times. But this time it was just like, nope. No, nope, not I got watching you. me. I got you. You got to you got to lay down the law. What else have you watched? What else do you watch? 
What do I watch? Uh, I'm I'm a huge Bravo fan of all the shows. Originally, of course, because I wanted to watch my show. And then you're like, oh, what's the show before my show or after on the yeah. next day? And then, of course, we all go to these events. We start meeting uh, everybody, you know, so we know all the housewives and this and that. And uh, uh, you become friendly and you actually become involved in a lot of what's going on because it's also, you know, people think it's just TV. But when you actually live here and you work here and you're selling houses, you know, that are either owned by some of the people or were owned by them or you're going against their husbands or this or that, oh, it starts to get what very you, intertwined. What, what do you mean going against their husbands? Well, no, you know, uh, uh, Mauricio oh, yeah. and I worked together for oh, eight years. Of course, I was, I knew his lovely wife for many, many years <laughs> until she accused me of being a liar and I threw her out of my house. There you go. There you go. So you get intertwined with this stuff. So I watch all the shows. And uh, actually, I was walking out of my office the other day and TMZ uh, asked me if on the New York show, Ramona. Yes. Uh, I guess she just came out saying that she wants to be a real estate agent. Oh, she does? Yeah. So they were like, what do you think? Do you think she has what it takes? And it was funny because I was like, look, I think she'd be a good one because I think all Bravo celebrities are a little wacky, right? I think you have to have a certain element of kind of insanity yeah. really to be on reality television. So right. yeah, and I'm I in think agreement. it's the same for real estate. You have to be a little crazy in real estate to be, you know, to be successful. And uh, uh, so, yeah, I, I thought she would be a really good real estate agent. You really do think she would? I mean, <laughs> tell the truth here because- I feel like you would be a great real estate agent. Oh, I think I would be too. You would kill it. First of all, I the- am passionate about design and visuals, so I would yes. love it. Not only that, the accent. So I, I got oh, an English the guy. the accent would work for me? The accent is the closer. I wish I had that accent. Excuse I got an English me, guy. sir. <laughs> would you like to write a check for $50 million? <laughs> you see that? It just sounds, it sounds high end. Oh, And so okay. I would have you do- all the 20 plus million dollar showings because I feel like you would be the closer for that. Have you met, uh, I was actually curious about this. Have you met all these babies that these ladies are having on your show? Have you gone and seen any of the babies? I have seen the babies. You have? Yeah. Okay, cool. Exquisite babies. Yeah, they <laughs> so, really are. Well, thank you for the heads up, but you actually do watch a little bit more television than I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah you really do. late night because my, my deals in my head won't stop kind of turning. Oh, distraction. So I, I got to zone out. Yeah. And what better place to zone out than Vanderpump Rules? Well, Vanderpump <laughs> Rules is coming back. So where can everybody find you? When's Million Dollar Listing coming back? So we're wrapping season 13 right now. We will be on air in about two months. Uh, and then, you know, you can find me around Beverly Hills, the Josh <laughs> Altman on Instagram. Listen, if you got to get to me, you can find me. It's very easy. All right. Well, thank you for the heads up. There you go. Okay, so we're going to wrap up this episode with a call from Maddie, who has a question about friendship. All right, let's talk to Maddie. Hello, Maddie. Hello, it's so nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Well, you sound really happy. So what's going on? Um, So I want to talk to you because I was actually watching um, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, um, and I saw everything that happened <clears throat> with you and your friends and like right at the same time I was going I was having a falling out with like my whole group of friends and I kind of like I'm it's been like two months now and I'm still really struggling with it um and we have I haven't spoken to them since and I moved out and everything and I was just like wondering like how did you deal with it well, there's so many components. I mean, in Housewives, this was like the fourth or fifth season that they'd all kind of joined joined in together. And I just was in a very vulnerable part of my life. And I just didn't right, want to right. deal with it anymore. I was searching for, oh God, it makes me feel weird re- really even thinking about. Um, I was searching for happiness at that time in my life, you know, which was difficult to find. So I just decided to walk away. But there were just... If somebody doesn't believe you as well, or you believe that somebody doesn't have the best intention for you, what was the issue? Because, you know, I'd sat there at reunions with them all saying, you did this, you did that, you know. I I watched all of that happen and I felt, so kind of the short story of it is that one of the girls got a boyfriend. Um, I knew he was using hard drugs in our apartment and I said that and and they kind of all attacked me for it and said I was making stuff up and then come to find out he was. Um, and Did they then, apologize then? No. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like 
even I have been loyal to them and I've been a loyal friend for years to all these girls. And I felt like when I was watching you, you had been so loyal to them. And then for them to turn on you and start calling you names and say, like, call you a liar. Like that was really similar to what I felt. And I just like, I don't know. I'm just still struggling with it. I never got an apology from any of them and we haven't spoken. And it's, I mean, you know, it's just, it's tough. It's very, very, yeah, it's very, it's, it's heartbreaking. But also, don't you think to a good friend when you say, you know, I swear to you on my children's life, that's not true. And it, this was about some bullshit story in the press. Yeah. I mean, there's hundreds of stories in the press every day, you know. Um, and when you say you swear on your children's life, I would never do that. Anybody that knows me, loves me, trusts me and is invested in me, they would know that I would never say that if it wasn't true. I mean, any mother, why would you do that? I swear on my children's life. I'm a religious woman as well. So for me, yeah, that I was just well. basically like, okay, I can't do any more than that. If you want to believe the worst of me, but she'd always done that, Kyle. You know, she'd always kind of said, oh, I know who you are. But it, this kind of passive aggressive was- thing, you know, right. so I was just over it. I was over it. And I remember I came to her and I was talking about passing resolution 401 in Congress. That day had been passed and mm-hmm. sanked publicly by Congress. And all they want to talk about was some crap radar online. I don't have time to talk to radar online. I mean, for goodness sake. So I just thought that's it. I'm done, you know. And I sometimes think that if people don't have the best intention for you, um, right. I mean, if there's somebody in the group that you're really connected to, then why don't you just reach out to that one person and maybe reestablish a relationship with that one person? But if people don't have the best intention for you and there's 7 billion people on this planet, then move on. Or if they want to hurt you, then move on. And what's the reason they want to? I mean, maybe there's another reason. Is there jealousy? Right. Right. Yeah, and, you know, it's... The other thing that was kind of similar was, you know, uh, you had you lost a whole group of friends, but Kyle specifically was your best friend. Well, I had a girl that was specifically my best friend in the group. And that's the one that I'd be thinking about reaching out to. But it's I feel like the friendship is too broken at this point. But what what broke the friendship then? It was just more of like the name calling during the time, calling me a liar. And like after I had been so loyal to them for years and, and I had kind of stuck with them through it and tried to support them through it for them to kind of turn around on me um, for saying something that I thought was, you know, true. Even even if I didn't say it in the nicest way, I always tried to have, like, the best intentions and stuff. And then having a meeting where I was like, I think I'm going to try and get out of the lease if this continues, because they wanted him to live with us, and I didn't want that. So like, yeah, but when you were vindicated and he was found to be guilty of using hard drugs in your apartment, well, didn't that, I mean, didn't they then apologize? That was kind of the issue, is like they were, they kind of, there was just no apology. There was no sort of like, wow, you were right during this time. It was, there was still a lot of anger, I guess, between us. But when I talked about breaking the lease, I had, talked to them about it and that's I think when they were like they basically were saying that they wanted to try and be nice to me and not because they care about the friendship anymore but just because they they you know didn't want to waste their money or whatever and I think that was like the final straw with everything well then does that make sense well then you know where you stand right Right. so you know what kind of friends are they I mean, why do you want people in your life that are going to say we don't care about the friendship? So move on. Yeah. It's it's difficult, um, but I, I really, really appreciate like you talking to me. Well, I'm sure there's many other people that will value your friendship, your time, your company. And, you know, if, truly they don't wish you the best and they're kind of willing to hurt your feelings I just don't know that that's a positive energy that you need in your life absolutely I agree thank you so much all right well you can always say to them write them note and say I forgive you if you want to start anew you know um and you want to apologize then we can move on otherwise you know but I I'd done that a couple of times season two they came after me oh you've been selling stories I mean 
Why would I sell stories? There's never any stories ever about my restaurants and what's going on inside them. Why would I sell a story about a hamster or a, a, a dog or, you know, but the car was always saying that. And you know why? Because it's very hard to disprove. So I could go all the way up the ladder, go to the editor and say, can you say publicly whether I sold a story or not? He said, well, I can't say who did, but I can definitely say you didn't. And none of your, you know, the people around you did. So that wasn't good enough. You can take a lie detector. That's not good enough. You can swear on your children's yeah, life. That. That's not good enough. So you know what? Move on. There's another reason behind it, you know? So that okay. was it. So I was done. Yeah, you're just, you're, you're so strong and I really, I admire you a lot. So I, it means so much that, you're talking to me about this and I'm so sorry you had to go through everything and my heart really went out to you while I was watching the show and I drew a lot of strength from you during that time okay well you know what as I say if they don't have the best intention for you sometimes you know I don't know maybe these women are jealous of you I don't know what's going on but if they don't have the best intention you don't need them you need friends that are going to love you and support you and believe you right yes ma'am all right darling have a good day you too. Thank you so much. All right, Maddie. Bye. Bye. Well, okay then. Hey, I feel your pain, right? Anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Okay, thank you to that caller. I love hearing from you guys. So please continue to write in your questions. And I hope I've helped you. A big thank you to Heather Dubrow. And thank you to Josh Altman for joining me here today. Be sure to follow, rate and review Cast Media's podcasts, All Things Vanderpump, wherever you listen to your podcast. You can also subscribe to All Things Vanderpump on YouTube to watch the new video releases every week. So thanks, guys.